Hello everyone, I'm back again with another video. I hope you all have been doing well. This time I want to talk about the T90A and specifically the Shator 1 defensive suite it's equipped with. The T90A appears to be missing some important features in the Shator 1 defensive suite. It's also missing the Nikitka signature reduction paint. Right now in the game, no tanks are equipped with multi-spectral camouflage or radar and thermal signature reduction paint because Gaijin hasn't implemented that mechanic yet but it's probably coming at some point. But I just wanted to be clear that in this video, I'm focused on talking about the T90A and what it's missing and how we can uh, help it reach its potential. I can cover other tanks in their dedicated video uh, if this uh, has enough interest. And also, regardless of whether you think the T90A is good enough already, it is clearly missing some functionality in its equipment that could be modeled in the game. So if you're coming from other tech trees and you're not familiar with the T90A and its survivability features, it has a so-called three-tiered protection system, which is comprised of its composite armor, its Contact 5 era, and the Shator 1 defensive suite. Currently in the game, the Shator 1 is capable of jamming all SACLOS or semi-automatic command to line of sight anti-tank missiles like the TOW, Milan, and the HOT. The Shator 1 in War Thunder is notably not able to jam laser guided missiles like the Hellfire. And this is where it gets problematic for the current T90A implemented in the game. The actual Shator 1 defensive suite has three modes of operation fully automatic, semi automatic slash target designation, and manual slash emergency mode. The Shator 1 suite in War Thunder seems to be in manual emergency mode only. If you have good situational awareness, you'll see the laser warning indication, and then you need to take action to avoid being hit. My point is, we are not getting the full protection benefits that the system offers. The Shator defensive suite in automatic mode is capable of deploying the smoke grenades and then traversing the turret to face the threat azimuth that the laser warning came from, all without crew input. In the semi-automatic mode, the tank commander presses a switch that traverses the turret to the threat azimuth of the laser warning to rapidly acquire the target and neutralize it. Or he can choose to ignore it, especially if the tank is engaging in a higher priority or closer threat. So I said that in automatic mode that the Shator suite will deploy the smoke grenades without player input. This could come in handy in defeating some laser guided missiles like the Hellfire. As I said earlier, the Shator cannot jam the Hellfire, but the smoke will break the laser lock. This could save your tank if you're focused on another threat. However, I can see several tactical reasons why auto-deployment of smoke might be undesirable, and a player would rather manually control that. But I believe giving players the choice is what War Thunder is all about, especially in a game that tries to be as realistic as this. So right now in War Thunder, thermal signatures are modeled, and so is thermal signature reduction. By turning off the engine, you can cool the engine compartment and the exhaust zones of the vehicle. At the moment, Gaijin has not modeled multi-spectral camouflage or signature reduction paint applications. However, the T90A was equipped with one. Specifically, as you recall earlier, I mentioned the Nikitka application. This signature reduction application decreased the radar and thermal profiles of the T90A, meaning that it could be difficult to spot with a thermal sight or radar, and if acquired anyway, it was still at a lower risk of being successfully engaged by precision munitions due to the signature reduction package. Open sources indicate the Nikitka package reduced the chances of detection by 30% when using a thermal site. It also reduced infrared and radar seeker effectiveness by a factor of 3 to 6 times if you believe those claims. So it's not an insignificant amount of passive protection by any means, and if Gaijin chose to implement this mechanic in the game, they would probably just guesstimate it anyway. I mean, in my personal opinion, I think signature reduction mechanics could be implemented right now, as thermal and laser mitigation measures are already present in the game. When you deploy smoke, uh, excluding the ESS smoke, your thermal signature is reduced, and laser designators can't get any measurements anyway or even maintain a lock while the smoke screen is deployed. So in summary, the T90A could be a little better if Gaijin fully implemented all the Shator 1 capabilities. As to the Nikitka, the T90A is not at a significant disadvantage here because no other tanks have signature reduction paints anyway. But when the day comes for Gaijin to implement multi-spectral camouflages and signature reduction paints, I hope they don't leave the T90A out in the cold. But what do you think? 
Should the Shatora 1 get the extra modes? Should Gaijin implement more signature reduction mechanics for combat vehicles that have them? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in a future video.